as we put together a downtown master plan to present to council in, in, in July of this year. We have with us uh, from the Main Street Iowa program in Des, Moines, uh, in Des Moines, Tim Reinerts and Jim Thompson, and they're going to lead us through some discussion today, so I'm just going to go ahead. Um, as she said, the reason we're here today is to get your input uh, for this uh, downtown master planning process. We'd like you to all to make sure you have a spot at a table because during this process we're actually going to ask you to write things on the pieces of paper. So hopefully you all have access to paper and a marker at your table or at your spot because we do want you to uh, be able to have that input uh, on there. And to do that we're going to use what we call the magic wall. Some people call it a sticky wall. Has anybody used this in the planning process before? What this really is, it's kind of like a reverse sticky note. Okay, so you take these sheets of paper and it's, the wall has been sprayed, so you can come up and you just, the paper just sticks right to the wall. Okay, and we peel it off and move it around. So it's a really nice process that we can use. So any piece of paper will stick up on the wall uh, while we're here. So we want you to write on the sheets idea per sheet. We have plenty of paper, so we put more than one idea on the sheet. Okay, everybody clear with that so far? As we go through the process, there are lots of things that um, are going to help us with this process uh, this afternoon while we're here. The first thing is that we hope that you all share openly with your ideas. It doesn't do anybody any good for you to go out back out in the parking lot and discuss some things about the process or downtown that you didn't share with us during the meeting. This is your chance to share openly uh, with uh, the group what your ideas are. We also, of course, ask that while you're here to be here, um, we all know that you're busy people, so if you need to, you know, if your cell phone goes off or whatever, that's okay, go off in the back room, hopefully it's on vibrate so you don't interrupt the meeting. Uh, but to focus on what we're doing here. Also, as we share ideas, we ask that you don't judge anybody else's ideas right now. Give everything a chance to breathe, because that also allows people to share open. Okay? There is no such thing as a, as a bad idea, Professor Meyer always told me. It's how you interpret those ideas that makes the difference. A few things that will hinder us while we do this today is that if you get up and get on your soapbox, this is not uh, what we really intend here today. If somebody gets up and starts going off on their little speech, everybody's got their own little thing, right, that trips their trigger, uh, we're going to try to cut you off because that will just hinder our process as we go, or progress as we go through the process. So share, share openly uh, with that. Uh, when you're here, what we're going to ask you to do is we're going to ask you a number of questions and we're going to ask you to put those ideas on a sheet of paper. Come up and share those with the group. Okay, so this is a participatory event today. So you guys are all part of this meeting. Uh, we are just the facilitators of the meeting, okay? So when you come up, what I've, my experience is that as people come up to, the meet, up to the wall, they turn and they talk to us. That's what they do. Now, please turn and talk to the group when you share your idea. And share it clearly, and then we'll put it on the wall. Okay? Is everybody okay with that? With all of that? Not? Nice. All right. Does that make sense? We've developed a few questions that will help us with our process uh, today, and we're going to share those with you. What we'll do is we'll give you the question, we'll give you some time to think about it quietly, write out some notes, write out your ideas on the sheets of paper. Um, does everybody have paper and markers? Maybe you guys back there might need some more paper. We've got some. Got some paper and got markers. Okay. Everybody's got a marker. They got markers. Okay. We've got plenty of paper, so don't feel hot, you know. And you're not limited to one idea either. The more ideas you come up with, the better. And then we'll just uh, let everybody have some time to generate those ideas, and then we'll start sharing. All right. So Jim, the first question for us to think about. Improve the look and feel of downtown Waverly. How can we improve the look and feel of downtown Waverly? One idea per sheet, just like Tim said. Enjoy the lunch, enjoy the afternoon, and who knows who's going to sit next to you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Paula Stevenson, a former business owner in downtown Waverly, current property owner in downtown Waverly, and also I was 
the lead chair on the sidewalk project on the east side of the river. And so my thoughts were to have trash cans reinstalled on both sides of the river, to redo the trees so that they're not blocking the, the signage on both sides of the river, and to finish the sidewalk on the west side of Bremer Avenue. Thank you. College. In my former life, I was an architect um, for 12 years, and I currently serve on the Historic Preservation Commission uh, for Waverly, and I have taken advantage of our historical architectural Main Street uh, styling that we have. Uh, last year, I did a keep on learning session at Wartburg for uh, community folks and, and highlighted some of our Main Street architecture uh, on our Main Street there on Bremer Avenue. We have some real treasures there, and I would like to see that expanded, particularly if we're looking at any improvements to the facades of the building. Uh, and I'm not even sure if we have current design standards uh, for that but uh, I think it's something we, we could take a look at. The, what, what's been done on, well, what I call the Big Six building here is, is absolutely phenomenal. That is a true treasure. And uh, if we can follow a similar theme in future careers, I haven't seen it. Oh, cool. Those in the uh, Waverly Area Partnership for Healthy Living. My interest is in encouraging people to have something to walk to and see. I like to see historic markers in the buildings. I'd like to see flowers and the color, the color schemes on businesses that draw up. I think Crawdaddy's has done an outstanding job as far as their building. Thanks, dear. I'm Hank Bagelman. I'm a member of the Planning and Zoning Commission. I think we need to work on signage that's consistent uh, so people know where attractions are, where sections of the community are. Thank you for about a dozen years or so and uh, my focus as you might say is kind of on east west since i'm on the west side um, but uh, i'll tell you what don said uniform storefront design building off of the uh, historic that we've got um, highlight the bridge i think it's an asset that we totally neglect and then uh, find a way to have a common design thing for the east and west side of the bridge Kristen Leary, I'm the marketing director at First National Bank and um, I am the past tourism chair for the Waverly Chamber. And my questions are, I think we need some design standards for um, our facade. I think we need to make an attempt to increase um, facade improvement grant money. And I think we need to look forward to um, consistency in building. Oh, I'm Ashley Coke. I'm with Lincoln Savings Bank. Um, I'm a Waverly Ambassador and I'm also on the Design Beautification Committee. Um, I just vote that we just need to keep the areas all looking uniform, clean and sharp, sidewalk, signage, basically everything that everyone else is saying. I'm currently on the Economic Development Commission and <coughs> too many former positions to go into. Um, uh, going ahead again with facade upgrades and a consistent look to the downtown area. Um, alleyway improvements and cleanups, so when people come to your back door, it looks as refreshing as when they come to your front door. Colorful plantings and clearly defined bike lanes. Everyone seems to want to, to push that way. They're riding bikes, they're, they're walking, hopefully, to places of business and we need to have those lanes there so that uh, it's a safety issue. Jeff Schroeder, CEO at Bartles. Um, my suggestion is focus on river features. I think we do a great job of that on the west side, but not so much on the east side in terms of public. You know, just a recreational focus. The other night, we live along the river. The other night, there was just a whole herd of kayaks coming down the river, and I think there's just such opportunity to really promote. Is that what they heard or heard? Yeah. It's <laughs> <laughs> all work worth it. Jumping ahead to the next phase of the questions, but adding destination shopping in terms of antique shops and some of those types of businesses like Stillwater, Minnesota is just a great example that people drive long distances to go there. And then just adding um, 
maybe some more eating establishments for breakfast, kind of like Cedar Falls, Main Street, you know, just for increased foot traffic. That's not Waverly, and I would like to see us uh, increase the number of retail outlets at the Main Street level in downtown Waverly. Uh, nothing against insurance companies and accountants and so forth, but those are businesses that could be on the upper floors and put more retail uh, outlets on the Main Street level. It's still kind of shoved off to the side. I think that we should do a more generic come to Waverly campaign, like as in TV or radio, that type of thing. I think we need to invite people to shop more, expanding on the Mons on Main or Ladies Night Out. Do we have any events for men? Oh, well, a lot of men out there. And a better link between the college and downtown, and I know that the college does have a person that sits on the Retail Promotions Committee. Um, which he's always telling us kind of things that are going on downtown. I mean, he hears what's going on downtown and he tells us what's going on at the college, but I just think there could be an expanded, better uh, communication about that. Owner of Professional Care Veterinary Clinic. Um, one idea I had was unite the businesses and advertise on a united front, kind of like what you were saying. Mm -hmm. um, you know, the shops at Waverly or Cedar Falls has done a really good job of that, the shops on me. Yeah. Um, promote the new and niche businesses in town. Uh, we have a lot of new businesses, not just on Main Street, but, but all over. Just kind of promote those new businesses and let people know they're out there. And spotlight businesses. Um, I like the newspaper, I know like a lot of uh, Cedar Falls Waterloo will do the best of the best. Kind of just spotlight individual businesses throughout the year that have achieved a lot or, or have a lot to offer. Have asked for donations. The Savannah Times businesses lock their doors, they seem to be coming. <laughs> I think we need to publicize all the things that businesses do for the communities. Organizations could not survive without yeah. the donations by businesses. And the public needs to know that. Mm -hmm. It might cost a little bit more to buy something here, but I'll put all the stuff to get in return. Mm -hmm. Owner of Signature Realty and a former downtown business owner, and our biggest hang was just that state highway designation. If we lose Highway 3, we can slow traffic down, put in curves, sidewalks, two lanes, parking, similar to Cedar Falls, just to improve the overall ambience of the town, downtown area. And hopefully we make up for the state money. Maybe <laughs> I'm Tab. We need to be more pedestrian friendly. Uh, we currently have an ordinance on the books that uh, you can't ride a bicycle between 4th Street West or East and the bridge. Um, so we need to work on that and, and make more pedestrian friendly. And then clear signage, uh, parking uh, over here or something like that, and over um, to 18 business district this way. Reporting for the Waverly Newspapers, this is Adam Greenwald.